Stacy, can you give us a sense what's going on now in Japan? Where is the disaster headed, the recovery, so forth? Uh, well, I think we can break it down into three different areas. I mean, one, we can talk about the disaster as a whole. The other, we can talk about the nuclear sort of um, situation that's going on. And the third situation is about electricity and gas shortages. So first off, in terms of the disaster, I mean, the death toll keeps rising. Um, there are uh, search and rescue teams. There's like 15 different um, countries who have search and rescue teams on the ground. Access is difficult in certain parts of the Northeast in Miyagi Prefecture. But um, I think that people are getting help, and um, definitely that, that is happening. Um, apparently, there are um, you know, food supplies, blankets, um, medical supplies in the hospitals that are required. But I think that the Japanese government is doing you know, a, a very commendable job in sort of coordinating um, those needs. A Telecom Sans Frontier is also there to work out sort of the landline issues and the communication issues as family reunification becomes more important and in, also in terms of the logistics of um, the response. In terms of the nuclear situation, as we know, there was a second um, reactor that exploded today. Um, I'm not in a particular position to actually speculate about what that situation is, but we know obviously that there were um, the evacuations of the people in the nearby areas, and they've been told to stay indoors for now. In terms of the electricity and uh, gas shortages, I believe that you know basically they were rationing both of these things, um, and which was a smart thing to do in terms of trying to figure out you know how long they might. Um, have these and, and wanting to really have everything available for the response efforts. I also get reports though, you know, first we heard over the weekend there were about six million households without electricity, then it went down to like 2.5. I just read an OCHA report of sort of 1.3 million households without electricity. So perhaps, you know, they are getting um, some cutoffs or actually um, less homes now are having to deal with that situation. I need to look into that a little bit further. Um, it's also important to say that um, a UN UNDAC team, which is kind of the disaster um, response team that first arrives in an emergency, is on the ground in Tokyo. And they usually um, help the government in coordination issues. They do um, initial assessments, and they also put out a flash appeal so that donor governments know exactly what is needed in terms of um, contributions. We've heard language like worst disaster since World War II. Um, that it's going to take the Japanese people a lifetime to recover from this. How do you compare this disaster with recent disasters, uh, Hurricane, Hurricane Katrina, the earthquake in Haiti, the earthquake in New Zealand? Well, I was asked on Friday, actually, well, how does this compare to the tsunami of 2004? And I'll take that as a tsunami. first instance, and then we can talk about the others. Obviously, uh, the economic damages are going to be much, much higher than they were in the tsunami just because we have a highly industrialized country. To give some sort of context, Kobe earthquake of 1995 was $134 billion to build back that city. Um, that's considered before this disaster to have been the most expensive disaster on record. Um, in terms of Katrina, it was 81 billion or 81 to 83 billion um, damages estimated. Uh, when we talk about back to the tsunami of 2004, where a lot of the damage happened in sort of rural, non-industrialized places like Banda Aceh, um, we were down to, let me just look at the figures again because I have sure. all of this written down. Um, it was about 10 billion. Sichuan earthquake, 20 billion. Um, so definitely this is above and beyond anything we've seen before. There have been some very interesting, though not necessarily coherent studies done. Um, the World Bank just put out a report on, you know, kind of how long does it take for a country to build back um, their uh, GDP after a disaster of even a median scale. It's usually at least five years and usually involves um, a deficit and sort of external, defic uh, external debt and also um, internal deficits. And as we know, Japan already had um, a large deficit, so we'll have to watch this carefully. How's the international response been so far? Has it been coordinated? Is it helpful? Um, or is, is it progressing in the right direction? You know, I think it is well organized. I, I believe that, you know, obviously the UN and any country that wants to help Japan has to have that um, offer accepted by the Japanese government. From what I understand, the Japanese government is coordinating everything and everyone is there to support them. So I believe that um, we're very much in the search and rescue phase. There's going to be a phase of basically collecting, identifying, and storing um, dead bodies, and also working out sort of water, food, medical supplies as sort of a secondary thing, um, shelter, and getting all those food and non-food items to victims of, of the disaster. Um, and then um, 
in the next few days, I think you know organizations will really start talking about family reunification and trying to figure out who is still missing and who is um, deceased and, and who has survived. What are some of the key lessons that we hope to learn to improve our uh, techniques in this particular disaster? What I find very interesting on a day like today, I mean, it's, it's nighttime now in um, Japan, but these search and rescue teams are going to be learning so much from each other. Um, this, uh, this is, as, as all the media have said, one of the most videotaped, photographed disasters of all time. Um, scientists are already saying that you know they they have such a wealth of data in terms of studying tsunamis and how they move and how they um, they hit coastlines. So I, I think we're going to learn a lot from the Japanese experience. Stacy White, thank you for your time. Thanks very much, Andrew.